blind date with Keith Emerson. Keith Emerson reviews the sounds of September 1970. Before blind date began, Keith Emerson rang the melody maker to ask if he could meet in a pub and have a quick drink before passing judgment. Keith sat through blind date in the melody maker office and seemed to enjoy taking over the job of music critic for an hour. Um, yeah. What can I say about this one, man? All those guitar groups write tunes around a guitar riff. They probably got into this riff in the studio, then played it for about six hours, and then they wrote a tune around that. Then, the singer writes some words. The middle eight is okay, then they go back into that riff again. There are so many records that fit the AABA pattern. All this heavy stuff is okay, but it should stop now. Zappers got out of it, and so have the Beatles. They have mastered writing songs in different formations. The average single of 10 years ago had 16 bars, then 8 bars of 16, nobody experimented. But the Beatles did, and they started doing things in bars of 10. This is like the old way, and it really doesn't stand up. Who was it? Neil Young? I've never heard of him. Why? Because I've been locked in a studio getting the band together for four months. I've heard this one before, Fire and Water, it's free. I'd like to see what he does on the guitar solo. Yeah, I bet the drummer was brought down when they chopped the end off like that. There were probably lots of arguments in the studio about that. I saw Free at the Lyceum a couple of weeks ago. After six numbers, they were all the same, all slow and chunky. I couldn't see what people see in them, but they must have something, you know. I actually asked some people what they saw in them and they all said it was all about the way they stand or the way they look. The guitar player is probably the best musician in the band. Every number at the Lyceum got a standing ovation. But all they play is slow blues. And the blues is in most musicians. All they prove is that they've got the rhythm for slow blues. You're a groupie girl. You're a groupie girl. You're a groupie girl. This is an answer back to Tony Joe White. So many people are cashing in on the word groupie, Frank Zappa's GTOs, books, and now a film. It seems a little sad to make the same sort of commercialism out of it. The words they were using were so corny, they were trying to be hip and using words like sussing. Musically, the harmonies were good, but the music didn't do much for me. There's a lot of money to be made from groupies for some young record producers. No idea who it was. I thought Tony Joe White's was the best to come out of the groupie scene. I don't want to be Worsted, spattered, no more <laughs> Cause a black widow Don't got on me, y'all I'm not cheating. His phrasing is like that cat I was talking about before, Tony Joe White. The way he cuts the end of his words is like that guy's style. This must be one of these occult groups into witchcraft. It's a bit of a drag, really, isn't it? It is Tony Joe White. Yeah, you can take it off, man. It has a very heavy, distinctive style, but that's about all he's got. Yeah, Ray Charles. No, it's not Ray Charles. I like the sax player. He sounds like Eddie Lockjaw Davis, but it's not him. The sound Lockjaw Davis gets has more of a rasp to it. It sounds like a typical Ray Charles backing, but I don't think this is Ray Charles. His pronunciation is not that clear. I don't know who it could be. I would have liked to have heard more of the sax. It would be interesting to know who it was. Don't play that song for me. It brings back our memories. You say I'll be with you, darling. Almost anywhere we're gonna go. It's the blue beat, man, the blue beat. Somebody's just recorded that. It's just gotta be a Mickey take. It's a Sha Na Na sort of thing. But at least the Shah Nanas are not serious. It should sell well in Brixton. Okay, take it off. No, play it again. I'm a masochist. Reverse tape, yeah. Wow, that brass has got a very insipid sound to it. Thin and watery, sounds like they recorded it in the early morning. Yeah, that brass section is terrible. They're not at all together. It sort of went off like a damp squid. You're expecting something to happen, and it never did. That's a shame. It really is a shame, that album. I don't know who it is. I actually saw the label, but I didn't see the name. I only saw Deerham. 
so it's got to be English. Yeah, they always say that on blind dates. Yeah, is that a stereo single? It's a very bad mix. The guitar is completely lost. It sounds to me like they used a stereo master from an album and cut a single from that. I think it's a track from an album. It's not good enough to get above the singles rat race. I would like to hear it on the album on a stereo set. Was it Jefferson Airplane? I can't imagine who the chick singing could be. The drums were very heavily reverberated to make them sound bigger. As I said, you can't hear the words or the guitar to know what it's about. Oh, Calcutta. Yeah, did they actually get around to singing this in the production? I'd really like to get around to seeing this and finding out what it's all about. A sitar? Well, of course, man. They could have written a much better theme than this for a play that's going quite well. It's been turned out like a machine. It could sell well to middle-aged men who read the Sunday newspapers for the sex, and I hope this will turn them on. But what a disappointment because it won't. It sounds like cinema music. Time to get the ices in. I don't think the British public will fall for that at all. They're too intelligent. I think Jimmy Young will play it, though. It sums up images of Sunday newspapers. This world, this world would be fine. Someone has suddenly found a sound effects tape lying around the studio. Look, fellows, we can use that on this. I like what the bass player is playing underneath. That's a nice technique, playing a chord that is related to the top one by its root. The harmonies are good, but the lyrics are very cliché. We're moving out of the acid thing when every song mentioned mind into the let's live together period. The trouble with this industry is that it becomes worn out very quickly. The arrangements are good. I like the French horn at the end. I'm not sure who the group was. It could have been a rival. They're one of the best vocal groups around at the moment. They're as good as the fifth dimension who I used to dig, only for their harmonies. The rest was rubbish. We are, we are. Yet Delaney and Bonnie. This is a Delaney and Bonnie number called Soldiers of the Cross that was on the first Delaney and Bonnie album. I like their funky piano entry anyway. The sax player sounds a little inhibited in his solo, but then anyone can be inhibited with a minute to read the score. In this case, I do prefer the original Delaney and Bonnie version. This is a good recording though. It's got loads of excitement, everyone shouting their heads off. I could guess blindly and say, Madeline Bell. The rhythm section has got a black feel, it's really good, but I can't see it doing anything as a single. <laughs> 